Oh! What the I'm just a kid. <laughs> oh, that's a horrible way to start a vid, bro. Right? Like, that's horrible. Move on. Nah, nah, that's. Wow, just. What is up, it's your boy Triple Into King here. We got a digital city video to get into. Let's get into it. Movies. A magnificent visual art form that can show the riveting story of one's life or journey. They can display the harshness of someone's struggles and the beauty of someone's rise, conveying emotions that whenever I see them on screen, I can't help but feel the same way the character is feeling on screen. Not only that, they can introduce you to a new world that is entirely detached from our reality that I'm almost always engulfed in. I think that's a beautiful wonder about movies. They can spark out emotions from me that I just can't get from any other media. True, God. But what kind of deep emotions does movies like this spark for me? <laughs> of Come on, that's for kids, bro. You, you can watch it as an adult, but you knew as a child, someone's childhood, they see it so much differently than we do. When you, we see, we, we any see other media. But what kind of deep emotions does movies like this spark for me? To us, that looks like that. To kids, to a kids game. To kids, that looks like out of this world. Of course, just like with everything else in existence, there's a not so good counterpart to movies. And these counterparts could be found way easier nowadays since most blockbusters nowadays aren't really that good anymore. Like y'all making so many superhero movies nowadays, when are you guys gonna make the Black Bomber superhero movie? I need that. I'll see that in theaters. You know they're gonna, Twitter's gonna hate that film, but if it's a good one, and dude, that will be the best show. Who made it? Is it DC or Mar I think it's DC. DC, you make so much money from that movie, I swear. Three times in a row. Y'all show my boy no respect. And yet y'all gonna produce the 18th billion. It's fast. I got family. <laughs> yo, yo, off brand. No, not off brand. Yo, pause. Okay, um, uh, low budget Vin Diesel. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> then petrol. <laughs> Furious movie. Ain't nobody wanna see that. And streaming services be producing half the slop we be consuming nowadays. You can find many of them on Netflix. There's a ton of banger movies on there. But after seeing it on TikTok from time and time again, it seems like there's a streaming service that is a gold mine for not only B movies but low quality looking, fifty dollar budget, filmed on a Motorola looking ass movies. Toby. And when finding this out, my curiosity got the best of me. I, I needed to see this. And when I checked it out, I was not only amazed, but I was perplexed on how amazing these movies are. Some of these movies will make Martin Scorsese reconsider what true cinema house, is. And this bitch is sitting on my living room couch. You the only one with a key. What are you talking about? Tiffany. Tiffany the f doll. Boy, I don't even know what you're talking about. I haven't been there in a week. Where the fuck did she go? To Wow, bro, that reminds me of like Mzansi, Mzansi Wait. We all know that channel, Mzansi Wait. Like, it's filled with B movies. Wait, did you say it's B movies or indie movies? You know, indie movies are better than this. I'm not gonna lie with you. Maybe nah. if you ain't know is a streaming service like the others, but unlike them, out of their original catalog, they have great works of arts like Bad Cat, Merry Finger Kill. And Shark Side of the Moon, you know, absolute classics that everybody knows. But outside, the oh, nice nah, those movies like Sharknado, sh Tiger Shark, Go Ghost Shark, Ice Shark, Tiger Shark, just a Shark. Dude. It's like those movies. The originals they produce. Tubi also has a big catalog of B movies, not the jazz B one, but B low B budget and indie movies. It has a whole bunch of films made by everyday people like you and me. Since anybody can make a movie nowadays, if you got a camera, you can make a movie. <laughs> what is this picture? I was gonna say, uh, just 
don't want just make just make YouTube. Just make YouTube. Like how do you even get licensing to do this? Like The thing is a lot of these films don't look the best or sound the best or even make sense half the time, but that's okay. These people made and created a movie that they're so proud of that they released it to the public for all of us to watch. There's no better accomplishment than that. I'll be talking about one movie today, and that movie is titled Love Beat the Hell Out of Me. And today, I'll be going through and over these me. movies, just so you guys can see a glimpse of what I saw of what wow. Tubi has to offer. By the way, this ain't sponsored by Tubi. They ain't paying me jack to do this. But if a Tubi exec <laughs> is watching this, Okay, if you're not sponsored, then there has to be something crazy in this. Uh, there's something. My pockets are open. Just like how my pockets are open for today's sponsor, War Thunder. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game that was ever made in the history of mankind. Play more than 2,000 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships in dynamic combined armed PvP battles. Every vehicle is incredibly detailed and modeled down to their individual components. Offering a highly immersive combat experience. And if you're a Warhead wanting to play this game, you're in luck. The vehicles in War Thunder span more than a hundred years in development, from the 1920s to the present day. And it has an in-depth customization for vehicles, apply hundreds of different camouflages, place historical markings anywhere on your machine, as well as 3D decorated such as bushes and equipment. My favorite kind of tank in the game is this one, this one right here. So what you waiting for? Download War Thunder now. It's free. Whether you got a PC, PlayStation, or Xbox, you can get it. Use my link in the description and download it now. All right, let's get this started. I got to go to my BBL appointment later. So the movie I'll be talking about is Love Beat the Hell Out of Me. Now, I'm not sure this movie is trying to be a sequel or a remake to the 2000 movie. This one, yeah, I love beat. <laughs> my mom loves this movie. It is that movie, bro. It is. It is. Yeah, it is. With the same title starring the original War Machine, but honestly, my research ended there. I ain't watching both movies. The movie starts off with the beautifully done studio logos and title card with some MF Doom song playing in the background. I don't know, I've only heard them from TikTok. And right at the start, we get introduced to our two main characters doing it okay why start off a movie with a sex scene why you instantly make it awkward when i'm with my family anyways our two characters renee and antonio are happily married they got a kid and they're doing fine i guess then we cut to antonio's okay. job at his office and he already acting like a demon what are you mm. Dude, chill mm. Mm. His boss then enters and introduces him to the new hire, Rhonda, and you can already see mad romantical tension between them. You can cut it with a sword or tortilla. It, it was that obvious. They're about to bang. Next scene, we are at a school with Dude, Renee bang, dropping dude. off her son too and in his classroom. There she meets her son's new teacher and the dude is buff like a Samoan. By the end of their combo, you can see even more romantical tension in the air. We seen so much lustful tension with these two and it was never with each other. She then leaves because she ain't trying to act up, you know? Next, we're at a studio hearing one of the best songs ever recorded. Sitting in my crib, trying to get blown. Niggas need to understand my shit just flows. Like the breeze off the fucking lake. I got this dope shit uncut. Make your ass lose. So this dude is Renee's brother, and apparently. <laughs> that was trash. That was trash. How old is this guy? Niggas need to understand my shit just flows. Like the breeze off the fucking lake. I got this dope shit uncut. Make your ass lose. Dude, get a job. Just get a job. Find a wife. Just have some. Dude, you're already too late with, with adulthood, man. Rapping, yo. You're too late. You're not 16, bro. You're not 14. You're not 2. You're not 10. Just quit. So this dude is Renee's brother and apparently this is Antonio's studio and they're all a part of this music group I forgot what it's called and no, Antonio no, no. invited some fine singers to help him record a song Renee brother and Antonio start hollering at these girls and all of a sudden this dude becomes a comedian No, he didn't call himself T. Slick. I'm uh, for real This candy man looking goofy <laughs> Yeah, say my name three times, motherfucking watch what happened 
<coughs> yeah, how dare you sabotage me in front of these ladies when your sister is literally my wife. But they kiss and make up at the end, so it's all cool. Then we tell... Yeah, some guys are like that. They be like, ah. If you cheat on, if you cheat on him, I'm snitching. If he cheats on you... Not my business. So. Support to this long salon scene where Renee works out and all the girls there are roasting each other, talking about their kids and that new teacher Renee met today. Her salon buddies egg her, trying to get the deets out of her, but she shows off her wedding ring, announcing her loyalty to Antonio. How sweet. Alright, not gonna lie. First third of this movie is kind of slow. There's a lot of small talk like Antonio telling Ray about the new hire and one of Ray's grown ass friends trying to flirt with a kid in the chicken shop. Uh huh. Hey, you can go home with me, fool. Oh, nah. She, oh, nah. Hire and one of Ray's grown ass friends trying to flirt with a kid in the chicken shop. Uh huh. Hey. It ain't until we back at Antonio's office and Rhonda call him for some assistance. Antonio heads over to her office and then his boss is looking for him because he just got nominated for an award for best attorney in the district. The boss and secretary go to Rhonda's office to tell Antonio the good news only to walk in on him giving Rhonda back shots. <laughs> They fired on the spot and Rhonda's laughing like she an anime villain. I predicted it. I predicted this. I, predicted I don't know what the hell that's about. We then cut to Renee bro showing up to that house and he trying to tell her the bad news about her husband Antonio. How do you know? I have no idea how he knows but like just, just deal with it. But then he does one of those long build up explanations instead of just saying what the husband did. Just say he cheated. Your husband ain't the man you think he is. <laughs> then Antonio walks in last second right before an actual explanation, of course. I hate when characters do that in movies. Just spit it out. Spit it out already. Then we cut to Renee visiting Antonio's old job because she just wanted to see her husband being a working and strong man. Only to find out this man hasn't been working there for two weeks. She obviously mad, but then the boss tells her the real reason why he got fired. Then she gets even more mad. What? You miss Chinese? What's Renee? You? The job? Everybody that work up in here, don't know the secretary. Renee. We then cut to Antonio. <laughs> mad. What? No, she ain't gonna do this. Miss Chinese? What's Renee? You? The job? Everybody that work up in here, don't know the secretary. Bro, what we do it? We then cut to Antonio making music with that singer he met earlier. Then they start f***ing. Nah, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. My guy really said, I already cheated once. I might as well do it again. Then Renee finally confronts him about his cheating, his job, and she is tired of his dishonesty. You need to calm down. Stop telling me to calm down. This man just starts going Chris Brown on her and starts chasing her with a gun like he John Wick in the most intense chase scene I've ever seen in the movie. She falls and he brings her back home and threatens her saying, you better not leave me or I'm gonna go crazy. And he's also a crackhead now, I guess. Next scene, her brother show up and sees her face. Super worried, he asked, who did this? And she's like, Antonio, but we're not together no more, so there's nothing to worry about. But he wasn't having it, and he was gonna deal with it on his own. Bro waits for Antonio to pull up out of his car to drive by his ass. Hey, Antonio, you been beating on my sister? Yeah, that's my wife. And in Antonio's dying breath, he licks his lips and then dies again. Can't be seen having chapped lips around the hose. Then we cut to his funeral, which is mad empty. Not even his son showed up. Nobody liked this nigga, I guess. And Renee crying like he ain't just beat her ass five minutes ago. What did I do? Renee then goes to see Antonio's see. mother. When after seeing Renee's scars, she said she always feared this would happen to her. Turns out Tony's father was also a cheater and a beater. And Antonio got his bad habits from his daddy. She begs for Renee to leave Antonio, but Renee says she can't leave him because he threatened her. 
but he was just at his funeral. He dead now. What are you going to do? Slap you from the grave? Like, that's just ridiculous. Tony's mom then recommends her to at least leave the house while he's still there. And then she proceeds to think about her son's teacher that she spoke to for like 30 seconds. Uh, I didn't know you guys had that kind of relationship already. Anyways, we go to the next scene at night to the singer girl appearing to be catcalled by some random homeless dude. Only for him to be Antonio? I thought this man was dead. What the hell he doing back? First time I saw this scene, I thought it was a flashback or something, but nah, he, he's alive, he's alive live, so what was that funeral about, some Mr. Robot dream sequence or some shit, how is he not, oh, bad editing or something, not dead, I mean from when I found out later on in the movie, he ain't from Wizards of Waverly Place, so how he came back to life, in the movie, never explains this he, he's just alive again and homeless now my personal theory is that he has the same powers of kenny from south park but that's just me anyways he confronts the girl about her not answering his calls but she ain't having it with his drug problems because he's a junkie now I, I guess he gets mad and is about to smack her but then she pulls out the blicky on him me go he slowly backs away from her and then notices someone he knows in the alleyway i know you i know you It's his dealer, and he begging for more compound V, but he got no money, so he offers to do whatever she wants. They walk away together, and we transition to a montage of Renee becoming a stronger so woman who don't need no man. We then cut to her packing her bags to move out, and while packing, Renee friend frantically comes in the room. Renee, Capone called. We need to go get Antonio now. Get him for what? Yeah. Like I said, we need to go get Antonio. And she does one of those things where she don't explain why she has to do it. She just says, there's no time. Like, nah, you got to explain why I need to save my abusive husband because I will never be in the mood for that. Renee eventually agrees to go. And as they looking around for him, they pull up to a trap house. And then her friend like, nah, let's just get out of here and call the police. This place ain't safe. But Renee's like, nah, he my husband. Nigga, you leaving him? Both of them go inside and Renee's friend starts tripping for good reason, saying again, this ain't safe because there's literal junkies walking around and why are we doing all this for him? Him! Then Renee says, look, I just need to know. I just need to know what he's been up. You don't need to know nothing, bro. It's the more you know, the more it hurts. So just go. That rhymed. So, no what? He had a crack house. That's an obvious sign to know what he's been up to. Renee's friend is spitting wisdom while Renee herself is spitting dumb asser. Anyways, they find Tony and he acting like his usual self ever since he died. Antonio! He's born. Who the fuck coming in my crib? He start begging her to come back and Renee just staring at him for a little bit and she just says, let's get out of here. She seen everything she needed to see. Then why the hell y'all here? What the hell you expect? look like to him to be the kingpin of the house mm -hmm. they leave and then he chases them and then we transition to a murder scene and it turns out tony's drug dealer died of an overdose and they suspect her boyfriend of doing it now they haven't even identified her body yet so i don't know how they know she ha she has a boyfriend one of the cops walks outside because he keeps complaining about the stink of the body damn please get that damn body out of here he then sees a group of young African-American men hanging out, minding their own business, and then the woman cop sees this and is like, This man, I bet you $20 that he sold the drugs to Tasha. Yeah. You know what? Hold it right there. Y'all just saw these random dudes and automatically assumed they did it? You didn't even question them or yourself. You just went after them without no evidence. Like, damn. This movie's more realistic than I thought. But this one knows karate, so movie logic, I, I guess he did it. And that's the last we hear or see anything related to that, so what was the point? We cut to Antonio walking to Renee's house, begging some more, but Renee is really done done with him this time. He tries to beat her ass again, but she's a strong, independent woman now, so the self-defense training came in clutch. She then tells him she going to church, so if he coming, he can come. He says yes. Not walk. Mm -hmm. I'll go anywhere with you and enters the car with her, which I don't know how she comfortable with this man being in her car after he literally just tried to knock her out like he was Tyson. They enter the car together and that's it. That's the end of the movie. That that's it. Yep. But it has one of those though I'm hopeful. Yep. 
Yes, I am hopeful as today. And this, so that automatically makes this one of the best movies I've ever watched. Now, what are my thoughts on this movie? I thought it was pretty gosh darn entertaining. Sure, it had its mishaps like having a slow first 20 minutes, but overall, I freaking loved it. And I'm never gonna judge the acting of these types of movies. I think that just comes with the Tubi package. But, but the writing in these movies always takes a turn in a direction that I'll never predict by the time I'm at the end of the movie. Like, who the hell this? Was arrested for a call? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not getting any money from rapping gang. Yeah? You're not. You gotta get money somehow from in with the firearm to intend to kill a This guy robbed. But I love movies like this. They're fun to watch, and I bet the people who are making it had fun making it too. Now I'm not gonna fuck around and say this movie's amazing or anything up there with the likes of Citizen Kane and Date Movie. But if you're looking for something stupid, fun, and entertaining to watch, I recommend this. Cause I think this movie encapsulates what Tubi movies are about. Ridiculous. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I've been gone for God knows how long, but hopefully that won't happen again. Hopefully. But I still 100% definitely love all of you guys. I love you. I love you. Also, thank you War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Remember to click my link in the description to download the game for free on PC, Xbox, or PlayStation. Yeah, thank you War Thunder for the sponsor so I can keep my lights on and not be homeless. Anyways, that's all I wanted to say. And in conclusion, I love you. And I'm back on my grind. Don't be good, man. Happy for your sponsorship. The last time you had a sponsor was raid and that was like six videos ago so yeah i'm, I'm happy for you my boy <laughs> two movies wow it's nice to know that you americans have your own uh triple a movies indie movies and and that so it's been triple into king with some horrible ass movies that are fun to watch with the boys unless you're into that there's nigerians for that Shh. <laughs>